Excuse me, sir. Have, have you got a moment? I'm doing a survey on TV watching habits. Can I ask you a few questions? Well, um, will it take long? No, no, just a few minutes. Well, okay, go, go ahead. Well, first, um, let's see, most importantly, do you have a TV? Yeah, yes. Right, uh, we need a little basic information about you. First of all, can I have your first name? Um, Alan, uh, spelt A L L E N. Okay, and your surname? Yes, um, Silver. Silver? Yeah, um, do you want me to spell that? Uh, yes, please. Okay, S Y L V E R. Thanks. And can I have your address? Yes, it's 13 Main Road, Manchester. Main, Main Road, is that M I? Oh, sorry. Is that M-A-I-N-E? That's right, yeah. M-A-I-N-E, yeah. And have you got a telephone? Uh, yes. Oh, sorry, could I have the number? <laughs> oh, right. Sorry. I thought, I thought you just Don't. wanted to know if I had a telephone. Okay, uh, the number, yes, it's 061 77063. 061 77063. Mm-hmm, that's right, yeah. And you're British? Well, actually, I'm Canadian. Um... Mm -hmm. I live here in Manchester, but I was born in Toronto. You don't have an accent. Well, no, I've been here a long time. And, uh, I'm sorry, I have to ask for your date of birth. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, it's the 8th of October, 1959. 08, 10, 59. That's right, yeah. And are you married? No, I'm, I'm single. Right, and could you tell me what you do for a living? Pardon? What's your job? Oh, well, I'm a teacher. Oh, really? Yeah, I, uh, I work at the university. Ah, OK. Now, let's get down to the questions about the TV. I'll just turn over the page here. Excuse me, sir. Have, have you got a moment? I'm doing a survey on TV watching habits. Can I ask you a few questions? Well, um, will it take long? No, no, just a few minutes. Well, okay, go, go ahead. Well, first, um, let's see, most importantly, do you have a TV? Yeah, yes. Right, uh, we need a little basic information about you. First of all, can I have your first name? Um, Alan, uh, spelt A L L. E N. Okay, and your surname? Yes, um, Silver. Silver? Yeah, um, do you want me to spell that? Uh, yes, please. Okay, S Y L V E R. Thanks. And can I have your address? Yes, it's 13 Main Road, Manchester. Main, Main Road, is that M I? Oh, sorry, is that M A I? N -E? That's right, yeah. M-A-I-N-E, yeah. And have you got a telephone? Uh, yes. Oh, sorry, could I have the number? <laughs> oh, right. Sorry. I thought, I thought you just Damn wanted it. to know if I had a telephone. Okay, uh, the number, yes, it's 061 77063. 061 Mm-hmm, that's right, yeah. And you're British? Well, actually, I'm Canadian. Um... Mm -hmm. I live here in Manchester, but I was born in Toronto. You don't have an accent. Well, no, I've been here a long time. And, uh, I'm sorry, I have to ask for your date of birth. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, it's the 8th of October, 1959. 08-10-59. That's right, yeah. And are you married? No, I'm, I'm single. Right, and could you tell me what you do for a living? Pardon? 
But what's your job? Oh, well, I'm a teacher. Oh, really? Yeah, I, uh, I work at the university. Ah, OK. Now, let's get down to the questions about the TV. I'll just turn over the page here. In the city of Leicester, in central England, a group of archaeologists has been busy. They have been digging up a car park. Last week they announced that they had found a human skeleton. Of course, archaeologists often dig up human remains. Human bones can tell us interesting things about the past. What people ate, how tall they were what diseases they suffered from, and how they died. The car park skeleton, however, is much more interesting. It is the skeleton of a man. He suffered from a deformed spine. He had a severe head injury, and part of an arrow was found in his back. The bones may be those of King Richard III, of England. Richard was born in 1452 and became king in 1483, after the death of his older brother, Edward IV. The 15th century was a very troubled time in English history. There was almost constant civil war between powerful families who wanted to control the country. A few months after Edward's death, his two sons, aged twelve and nine, disappeared. Many people are convinced that Richard ordered their deaths so that neither of them could ever challenge his position as king. Richard was king for only two years. In 1485, Henry Tudor led a rebellion against him. Richard's army was defeated at the Battle of Bosworth and Richard himself was killed. He was, in fact, the last English king to die in a battle. After him, English kings got other people to do the fighting and the dying for them. His body was displayed in public for several days. Then it was taken and buried at Greyfriars Church in Leicester, which is quite close to the site of the battle. The victorious Henry Tudor became King Henry the Seventh, and he and his children and grandchildren ruled England for the next 120 years. 
Greyfriars Church disappeared in about 1540, when the king seized all the monasteries in England and expelled the monks. Over the years, people forgot where Greyfriars Church had been. For a time, there was a garden on the site, and later buildings, and then a car park in the busy centre of Leicester. No one knew what had happened to the body of Richard III. Indeed, until recently, many historians believed that it had been dug up and thrown into a river at about the time that the monks left Greyfriars Church. In the city of Leicester, in central England, a group of archaeologists has been busy. They have been digging up a car park. Last week they announced that they had found a human skeleton. Of course, archaeologists often dig up human remains. Human bones can tell us interesting things about the past, what people ate, how tall they were what diseases they suffered from, and how they died. The car park skeleton, however, is much more interesting. It is the skeleton of a man. He suffered from a deformed spine. He had a severe head injury, and part of an arrow was found in his back. The bones may be those of King Richard III, of England. Richard was born in 1452 and became king in 1483, after the death of his older brother, Edward IV. The 15th century was a very troubled time in English history. There was almost constant civil war between powerful families who wanted to control the country. A few months after Edward's death, his two sons, aged twelve and nine, disappeared. Many people are convinced that Richard ordered their deaths so that neither of them could ever challenge his position as king. Richard was king for only two years. In 1485, Henry Tudor led a rebellion against him. Richard's army was defeated at the Battle of Bosworth and Richard himself was killed. He was, in fact, the last English king to die in a battle. After him, English kings got other people to do the fighting and the dying for them. His body was displayed in public for several days. Then it was taken and buried at Greyfriars Church in Leicester, which is quite close to the site of the battle. The victorious Henry Tudor became King Henry VII, and he and his children and grandchildren ruled England for the next 120 years. Greyfriars Church disappeared in about 1540, when the king seized all the monasteries in England and expelled the monks. Over the years, people forgot where Greyfriars Church had been. For a time, there was a garden on the site, and later buildings, and then a car park in the busy centre of Leicester. 
No one knew what had happened to the body of Richard III. Indeed, until recently, many historians believed that it had been dug up and thrown into a river at about the time that the monks left Greyfriars Church. <laughs>